How do you do? Maybe you know what it feels like to be in a hole you can't climb out of. One thing has gone wrong, and then more and more things pile on until you wonder how you will ever catch up. This feeling of hopelessness can lead you to wonder if it is still worth it to try, leaving you without any enthusiasm for the future. The man in today's story learned all too well. He couldn't fix things on his own. He wondered if there was any point to it all, until his heart and mind and life were unshackled. Here we are, our new home. It smells. Well, we have a little cleaning to do. Oh, careful, Matt! My room? That'll be yours, on the left. Where's mine? Same room. I told you that. Are your brothers coming? Uh, Kurt, Nick, Andy, come see our new house. It's not a house, it's an apartment. It's a home. Doesn't feel like a home. Do I have to share a room with Matt? No, but Andy does. Good. Let's go to our rooms. I don't want to. Where's Dad? Dad's not here. When is he coming? I don't... I don't know. He's not going to live here with us. I want Daddy. I know. I know, honey. He'll visit. That stinks. Erica, let me in. Can I be in your room, too? Erica! I was too young to understand why my dad had suddenly disappeared. I would later learn about his drinking problems. I would later learn that he didn't do his fair share of child support. I would later come to see my mom for the hero that she was, working so hard to provide for us five kids all by herself. But at that point, all I knew was that I missed my dad and I was pretty much on my own, with my mom gone all the time. As I grew older, I spent most of my time with Dino, who lived a couple doors down from us. Where you been? I was watching my little brother. Lame. Whatever. What you doing? Well, look what my dad left here. Is that? Are those? You smoked those, right? Dude, how old are you? I just never seen him in a box before. Well, these are cigarettes. Have you tried them? Not yet. There's more whiskey in our cabinet. I could run back and get it. If you have cherry coke to mix in. We could do both. Both? Yeah, let's smoke and then drink. I bet that'd feel cool. You think? For sure. Is your dad going to notice if there's two missing? Nah. How do you... Put it in your mouth. Okay. And then light it up. (laughs) You're a natural. Well, I see my dad do it every day. The man in our story struggled to escape the hold of his addiction. This is the miraculous account of his journey to redemption and freedom. The true story of Matthew Weber, right now on Unshackled. Did our dads control our destinies? I think a part of me assumed so. My dad was a drunk. What else could I hope to become? Plus, my bitterness toward him compelled me to rebelliousness. By the time I graduated high school, I was addicted to marijuana, mushrooms, and cocaine. My mom kicked me out of the house because of my reckless lifestyle, so I moved to Phoenix. I heard it was a fun place to hang out. But my roommate was a drug dealer, and I spent all my time with him and his friends. Dude, do you have anything to eat? Uh, Isn't there one more thing of ramen? No, we split that yesterday. I don't know what to tell you, man. Are you guys done whining? Do you have any food? You know what I have. Come on, let's do it. Did we already pay you? I can't remember. Yes, we're all squared away. That's why we have no food. You're going to forget about that in a second. (laughs) Have you done a lot of meth? Oh, yeah. This will make cocaine feel like baby food. Sweet. Mmm. You guys want to play spades? One step ahead of you. I'm not going to make it to work tomorrow, am I? No. And you're going to want to just accept that right now and have a good time. All right. 
Can we order pizza? I'll pay you back with interest. Do you think you'd have the guts to jump someone? Uh, you mean like... Whoa, Carl! Dude, 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 put that gun away! Hey, I'm just messing. Do you know how scary that is? You guys know I have this on me. You don't need to pull it on us. So, do you think you'd have the guts to jump someone and take their wallet? I don't know, man. I feel like I get caught for sure. I feel like if you did it in like a fast food restaurant, you'd be fine. Oh, for sure. Bad form to turn around and spend the stolen money on a burger, or you think you'd have to go somewhere else? <laughs> you, you'd definitely have to go somewhere else, man. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Yeah, yeah we, we can't do this forever. What else will you do? Oh, maybe head back to Seattle. What about you, Matt? I wonder what it would be like to be a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> We never actually robbed anyone, but we were always afraid someone was out to get us. In Phoenix, I lost 145 pounds from spending all my money on drugs instead of food. But I didn't know where else to go. Sounds like you need to come home, Matt. Where would I live? Mom's. She kicked me out. Just try. Where would I work? Remember Brian? Yeah, haven't thought about that guy in years. He's always doing remodeling stuff. I'm sure he could use a hand. Okay, well... Any other questions? Even if I wanted to come home, I couldn't. I have no money for a ticket. I haven't eaten since Monday. Well, I know you're working, so maybe stop spending money on whatever stupid stuff you're spending it on and start saving for a plane ticket. And also food. Food is important, Matt. I know. All right. Hang in there. Bye. Bye, brother. A few weeks later, I received a one-way plane ticket in the mail. I packed up my stuff and headed home. Mom let me stay with her for a little while, and before long, I fell right back into my old rhythms. I even hung out with my old buddy Dino, and we picked up where we left off. There he is. This place looks exactly the same. Yeah, man. How's your pops? Same old. How was Arizona? Uh, it's all right, it's all right. I don't know, man. I don't really know what I'm... It's like... I couldn't seem to get motivated about anything. Weird. You ever feel like... Just kind of like... What's the point? Of it all? Uh, um... Yeah, never mind, never mind. Being back has me sort of... I don't know, in my head. Dude, Phoenix didn't work out. That's okay. You just gotta keep moving. Right, for sure. What have you been up to? Have you try Oxycontins yet? These will disappear those negative feelings, I promise. Now, everyone's got that person in their lives who doesn't give up on them. Maybe it's a teacher or a family member or a really persistent friend. For me, it was my sister. And when you've given up on yourself, this person can be really... Well... Really annoying. My sister was always sending me gospel tracts in the mail and even sending pastors over to my house. Is that? Who could that be? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I'm in the shower! Matt? Who is that? Uh, the front door was open. Don't come in, I'm in the shower. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you. I'm, I'm a pastor. Okay. Didn't your sister tell you I was stopping by? No, no, she didn't. Hey, no worries. Should I come back in half an hour? Listen, I'm not really... God wouldn't want anything to do with me, I'm pretty sure. Well, you might be surprised, actually. Well, I don't want anything to do with him. I appreciate your time, but there's really no point. There's no point trying to help me. My sister should know that by now. Everyone should know that by now. I don't think anyone is past the point of being helped. Or listened to. Or loved. Just... Leave me alone, okay? Thank you, but no thank you. Back then, I was taking six showers a day trying to wash away my problems, my debt, my addiction. I just wanted to feel better. I remember putting my finger on the glass door and saying, 
Can anyone help me? Staring at myself in the mirror, it seemed like I had no face. My face was dark, muffled, worn out on all kinds of drugs. Something was wrong with me. In that moment, I knew I had two options. God or suicide. I kept going. Something inside me prompted me not to give up that day. I pulled myself together and I headed out. I knew I needed to get my finances in order. But first, I went to a nearby church. I thought maybe I could find the help I had earlier refused. I was crying as I sat in the sanctuary. So I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, one event for the children and a separate event for the parents. That makes sense. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, so we'll keep the adults up here in the chapel. And... Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, th- that's all right. I just need to sneak by. Yeah, thank you. Anyway, Karen. Adults up here, kids in the multi-purpose room? Exactly. I think that makes the most sense. I sat in that chapel for over an hour, crying, and no one spoke to me. People moved around me, and I felt invisible. I pulled myself together and headed to meet with my accountant. I needed to get my taxes done. That was what responsible people did. And that was the kind of person I wanted to be now. All right, Matt, let's take a look. Uh, Do you want to pull your chair around so you can see this? Sure. Okay, looks like you owe about $5,000. Whoa. Well, that's state and federal combined. Okay. When is that... When do I have to pay that? You have two weeks. Okay. Sorry, I don't have better news for you. Yeah. If we get you in earlier next year, we can go through your finances more carefully, see if there are things you can write off or how we can make this more manageable. Sure, sure. All right. Well, let me know if there's anything else I can do. Could she loan me the money? That's what I needed someone to do. I didn't have the heart to tell her that I was also 40000 in debt. I got back in my truck and headed to the freeway. Suddenly I noticed that my wheel won't turn. My life is already in shambles and now my wheel won't turn. You gotta be kidding me, I thought. I couldn't get on the freeway, so I just start driving. And I stumble upon a little church. Hello? Hi there. Can I help you? You look familiar... Did I do a tile job for you a few years ago? That's right, you did. Tell me your name again. Matt. Matt. Good to see you. I'm Ted. Tile still looking good? It's holding up just fine. Good, good. So, what's happening? What brings you here? Well, as a matter of fact, my wheel won't turn. The wheel in my truck. I... I can't steer at all, so my only option was to keep going the way I was going, and then I just noticed this place, and I pulled in. (laughs) Can't really steer my life these days, so it's no wonder the truck doesn't trust me either. I, um, I don't know, man. I haven't been sure what to live for besides pills for most of my, well, most of my adult life, and now I'm getting to realize that's not worth living for. So I started wondering if anything... If anything was. Sorry, I didn't mean to bust in on you like this. Well, I think you've come to the perfect place. I believe God loves you, Matt, and wants you to invite him into your life. I believe that might be the change you're looking for. Nah, man, my sister's always going on about that, about me needing to get saved. I'm not ready for that. I'm a mess. Is it all right if I pray for you? Um... All right. Even though I didn't feel ready to invite Jesus into my heart, it felt so good to be prayed for. God felt close. I started attending that church, and in my town, word travels fast. You're going to church? Okay, don't get too excited. I'm not. I'm not. That's cool. Let's chill. What you doing? Going through mail. Sweet. Well, that's cool about church. I'm so excited for you, Matt! Erica! I'm praying for you. 
I've been praying for you for a long time, and you know that. And if God is moving in your life, I want to know, dude. Talk to me. I'm not talking to you right now. Come on. I'm hanging up now. Why? Please, I want to talk. You want to talk? You're not going to like what I have to say, but here it goes. Tell me when you don't want to hear anymore. Okay. I'm addicted, Erica. To drugs you've never even heard of. I spend all my money on it. I'm in debt. I drink. I party. I think about what I can do to get more money, to get more drugs. I'm nothing. So, see? You don't even know how bad my problems are. You have the same problem I do. The same one we all do. We're all sinners in need of a savior. And only Jesus can make you into something new. That's what I want. I need all things new. That's why I'm trying to get my act together. Literally, right now, I'm opening all my bills that I've been ignoring for years. I'm staring at the numbers. I'm figuring out how I'm going to pay them. How I'm going to get right. You should see me. I... Quitting smoking? I'm... I'm... That's great, Matt. But you don't need to do that before you get God involved. Of course I do. I'm not, like, holy. Oh, I know. Thanks. He loves you now. You can't fix it all by yourself. You can't clean it up. Wouldn't you have done that already? I've been trying. Just can't seem to get it to stick. Here it is. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You, me, all. Listen, you don't have to convince me that I come short. I know I got problems. I just told you all of them. Okay, so the consequence of those problems is separation from God. Forever. In hell. I don't know, Erica. I don't think I'm ready for this. God loves you. He died for you to close that distance between you, to make a way for you to be with him forever, for you to be forgiven. You can't make yourself any more ready than you already are. You just got to repent and receive it, and he'll make you new. That's what I want more than anything, but no, I can't. I, I, I can't do it like you. All dressed up and going to church eight times a week and saying everything just right. I can't do that kind of thing. Would you put your bills down and listen to me? You're not going to pay all your debt off at once. You're going to do it one dollar at a time. Same way with your heart. He's going to change you one step at a time. It doesn't need to happen all at once. But it does have to start with you repenting and receiving the invitation. There was a young guy who came to our church, a 17-year-old. He heard the gospel, heard how much Jesus loves him, and he said, I'll get around to it. I got time. I'll get right with God in the end. Okay. Just two weeks after his visit, the pastor got a call that this guy had been shot. I'm done talking, Erica. I I, I gotta go. I melted to my knees, and I started to cry. Jesus, I'm sorry for who I am, what I've become. I believe you want to wash away my sins. I believe that you can. Will you? I want you to be my savior. I want that so bad. There wasn't a pastor. I wasn't at a church. I didn't feel holy or sacred at all. But I was. I am. I am sacred because Jesus saved me. And the Bible says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's what I discovered that day, and what I'm still discovering today. I got up from my knees and I was free. I was new. That day, God delivered me from my addictions. Within minutes of my spiritual salvation, He took away my impulse to use. The Lord didn't deliver me from all my problems. I was still in debt. But I wasn't alone. Jesus wanted to come into Matt's life because we are everything to Him. He leaves the 99 and goes after the one because of His unwavering love for us. 
What was cool about that time in Matt's life is he started to listen and believe God. I wanted to be as close to him as I could. Getting out of debt was just a byproduct of living for Jesus. Since that day, you got serious about your debt. You did it, one step at a time. You let go of things you loved, and we worked through some finance books and planned a careful budget together. I took a chance and invited Jesus in. And every time I trusted God with an area of my life, he proved to me that he had my back. God then called Matt to attend Bible college. I still can't believe that. Me either. But I went. I had promised him my life after all. It was there that I met my wife, Megan. We started a family, and now we are starting our first church in Wisconsin. Who would have thought God could do anything with a beat-up drug addict like me? I did. I did think that. I kept telling you that. I know, I know. I'm just saying. I told you so. (laughs) (laughs) If Matthew's story spoke to you, you too can make that decision today. You too can repent and receive God's invitation right now, wherever you are.